My name is Caitlin Reichley. I am a higher level candidate in IB English A12. I will be doing my oral commentary on an extract from I Taste a Liquor Never Brewed by Emily Dickinson. This poem is, compo is composed of four quatrains with alternating slant rhyme in the first stanza and alternating exact rhyme in stanzas two to four. The topic of this poem focuses on the intoxication of life and the natural beauty of the earth no matter the season. The speaker of this poem is ambiguous, but for the purpose of this commentary, I will refer to the speaker as a woman. She seems to have a sunny disposition that is reflected through the poem continuously and is emphasized by the use of punctuation such as exclamation points. In order to analyze this commentary, I will separate it into the four stanzas that it is. The first stanza focusing on what that what she is experiencing cannot be manufactured by man. The second, which describes her love of indulgence in the alcohol, which is a metaphor for nature. Uh, the third stanza focuses on the uh, metaphor of the changing of the seasons through the use of natural imagery. And the last stanza focuses on the fact that it is now winter, and yet there is still a reason for the speaker to be indulgent in her surroundings. In the first stanza, it focuses on the fact that what the speaker is experiencing is unique and that this indulgence cannot be artificially made. It's the first line of this poem, I taste a liquor never brewed. So even though she is experiencing this, it is not something that can be made. It cannot be brewed. And she says that from the next line, from tankard scooped in pearl, she connects this with the first line, tanker, tankards indicating largeness, that, they're, that what they're trying to do, there is mm, a lot of it going on. And when it says scooped in pearl, it indicates a naturalness of of the alcohol that they are in fact trying to recreate this natural uh, this natural thing that she is experiencing at the time. And again she continues to focus on this that not all the vats upon the Rhine yield such an alcohol. So again nothing is able to recreate this otherworldly experience that she is going through at this time. The second stanza uh, uses uh, natural imagery such as air, dew, summer days, and molten blue. She begins calling herself names such as inebriate of air and debauchee of dew, which emphasizes the fact that she is an indulger of these things, she indulges in air, she indulges in the dew of the earth. And the next line is emphasized by the uh, change in meter, because previously throughout this poem, it has been continuously iambic tetrameter and iambic trimeter. But in line seven, the meter slightly changes to put emphasis on a single word, reeling. And this can connote that the summer seems like it will never end, as if it were connected on a continuous reel, or the line is reeling through endless summer days. So through this, she is focusing on the extent of summer and the beauty of it that it seems that it will never end. She then continues to say from inns of molten blue, 
Now, molten blue is a metaphor, in a way, for the sky. So she is, in a way, saying that it's taverns of the sky that is producing the air and the dew that she is uh, indulging on through these summer days. In stanza three, she begins to use uh, imagery that uh, focuses on nature and nature's creatures. When landlords turned the drunken bee out of the foxglove's door, this, uh, these two lines can emphasize and begin to connote the changing of the seasons. And it also connects back with stanza two saying from inns of molten blue, it is now talking, in stanza three, it is now talking of landlords, which can be made to connect the drunken bee, there in is the sky. And it says out of the foxglove's door, which is a specific type of flower. So by saying that the bee is being taken away from the flower, that the flower is going through the cycle of life that it is now changing from the season where it thrives and is blooming to when winter comes and it is stripped of its life. Uh, Emily Dickinson continues to say when butterflies renounce their drams, uh, drams is a small shot of spirit, so the butterflies are no longer taking what could possibly be nectar with drams uh, meaning nectar and she says I shall but drink the more so even when the bees and the uh, butterflies have left and they have gone away she will still continue drinking in her surroundings just embracing her surroundings for what they are in their beauty this stands this stanza also connotes a change in time from the first two stanzas which will be further emphasized in stanza four here the first line speaks of seraphs who are swinging their snowy hats and this would uh, give the impression that a mythical or otherworldly persona is approving of the action that she will be doing further in this stanza. And this line also by saying their snowy hats connotes that it is now the winter time. So the changing of seasons has continued and is now um, is now winter time. It has changed from summer to winter. Uh, the next line says, and saints to windows run, which again gives the impression of approval of her actions, like a saint, some, uh, a divine being is watching her and running to the window to be able to see what she is doing with the world, what she is embracing. Then it, the next two lines describe what the seraphs and the saints are looking down upon, which is to see the little tippler leaning against the sun. Uh, a, temp a tippler is usually a drinker of spirits or uh, usually with intoxication falling. And by this last line, leaning against the sun, knows that uh, the tippler is embracing the natural warmth provided by the sun in the middle of winter. So although winter connotes that it is cold outside and the season is rather dreary, that this tippler is still embracing the his surroundings or her surroundings. These four stanzas together connote that no matter what this season is, there is always something that is worthy of appreciation. Uh, as we can see from lines one to two, this is uh, iambic tetrameter and uh, iambic trimeter, 
which is a commonly used uh, aspect of poetry for Emily Dickinson. Also, there is the capitalization of seemingly random words and the frequent use of dashes, dashes, which is typical of Emily Dickinson's style. Uh, uh, also, Emily Dickinson frequently uses uh, nature imagery and uh, the use of the changing of seasons to create meanings and give the themes to her poetry. Through the use of alternating rhyme and parallel stanzas, Emily Dickinson creates a musicality that resembles that of a song. And through her use of alcohol-related imagery, nature imagery, and the conceit of intoxication, which has taken place throughout the entity of the poem, she has been able to develop the theme of the natural beauty of earth and the indulgence of embracing it. Um, just as you've mentioned, the use of, of alcohol um, juxtaposed against natural imagery, do you, do you feel like that's, um, that that imagery works? Drunkenness, debauchery, reeling, um, um, images of a, almost a pub, do, do you feel like that works in light of um, the uh, resonance that she's trying to draw of nature? I think it, personally, I think it does because with alcoholism and drinking, it almost connotes uh, a desire or um, an addiction to it, as you can see in alcoholics. And by using that uh, imagery of addiction, she has been dis she's been able to describe her ultimate passion for the for nature and um, just the beauty of the earth and how she indulges in it and through the use of imagery such as the drunken bee and renouncing their dreams, I think she has effectively uh, portrayed her theme. Um, and you mentioned um, many observations about how this poem is typical of her style. Are there um, specific poems that you have in mind in regards to some of these uh, comments you've made about naturalistic imagery, caps, and dashes? Um, well, for capitalization, that another poem that is similar in style to this is The Wind, Caps Like a Tired Man, which also has many uh, dashes and um, capitalization of words. And as for uh, imagery of nature, um, she another poem that she uses this in is, I believe it's called A Bird Down by the Walk, which uses the imagery of birds and um, insects. Great, thank you. This concludes our oral commentary. <laughs>